So our next speaker is Bense Arato from BI Consulting. He also organizes the Pi Data Budapest meetup and he is a visiting lecturer at the Central European University where he is teaching courses on data visualization and visual analytics. So welcome Bence and um, let's start. Thank you for your kind introduction so I can kind of slip my first side first slide. Just one thing I might be I want to mention that uh, this talk is kind of in the intersection of two of my kind interests, data visualization and working with Python. And during the talk, I kind of like to share my experience, what I, what I had when I was learning about the different options which exist in the Python world for visualizing data. Uh, let's start with a bit of thank you. This talk would not exist without the help, the works, the presentation, the talk from many people from the Python data visualization community. So thank you for all. And special thanks to Jim and Nicholas, who was kind enough to provide feedback during the preparation for this talk. And my colleague Annette, who helped with the code examples, what you will see uh, during the talk. So thank you very much. And a word of caution as well. At first, the Python data viz landscape is quite large. So this talk will only cover a subset of the libraries and not everything which is there. All libraries have pros and cons and the evaluation is always subjective. So what you will hear is actually my point of view, my personal opinion. You might have different uh, preferences for how you would like to visualize your data. And finally, a technical comment that uh, the code samples was prepared on Google Colab and works well there. But if you want to try them out in different environments, you might have to make adjustments. All right, first part, introduction. Uh, the reason for this talk is came back to this uh, very nice chart. When I was researching the different options existing in the Python visualization landscape, I was a little bit confused and battled. There is so many libraries that connected in many interesting ways. They seem to be libraries doing the same thing. They are libraries with different syntax. So I, I set out to kind of structure them in a way to create a map which will help me understand what kind of libraries are there, which are the main libraries and how they are built on each other. And this is what I will share today, but a bit of uh, uh, preparation before the main part of the talk. We will many times we'll mention that some, some libraries are more low level detailed, or as we can say imperative, which means when you have worked with the library, you have to exactly tell to the computer how you want the, the chart created with the exact steps. And with other libraries, you can go to the uh, declarative way where you just tell the computer that what should be done. I need a scatter plot for two of these variables and the library will kind of find out the exact details how they would work, which is typically used by the higher level libraries and the code would be shorter, easier to use, easier to understand. The examples in the talk we use the Penguin datasets. It's a very nice and funny dataset recently released. It has the data on several observations and different kinds of penguins. So this is how it looks like loaded into a pandas data frame. We have a species information, which kind of penguin it is, the location, some measurements, other categories. This is the data set from which we will create uh, all of the example charts, it is loaded into a data frame called DF. That's what you will see in the code examples. So the first major part of the talk is the charting libraries. And I tried to group them together because I believe there is separate group of charting libraries, which is connected to each other or building on each other. The first and probably the most well-known library is matplotlib. There is a saying that everybody starts in charting in Python with matplotlib. This is the chart, this is the library we has been around for the longest time. It does many, many things. So it has a, a large number of use cases where you can use matplotlib for academic publication to data discovery and creating uh, working libraries for any kind of visualization need. Uh, it's a very nice thing in the, in the visualization world in Python that almost all of the libraries has a nice gallery where you can see at least what kind of charts is supported by the libraries. And also typically if you click on a library, then you will see a code sample. So you can, it's very easy to understand what kind of code you have to write to create 
in multiple clip, a bar graph or a horizontal bar chart or any other kind of chart which is supported by Matplotlib. All right, let's have a look at our first example chart. So here, what we create every, with every library is a scatter plot, which kind of compares the bill length and the flipper length for the penguins. And uh, we color the different species of the penguins in different colors. And we have a legend and some access titles. And in sense, the method the code is quite safe for state forward. We are importing the library. We are setting an option about the figure size. Then we are group. We are looping over the species group. So every group, every kind of species, we are adding a set of markers on the plot. Then we are showing the legend and setting some access labels. It's understandable. It works well. But you will see that higher level libraries will offer a much more shorter syntax, uh, creating a very similar charts. So. Let's start building our data visualization map. The background is Matplotlib, is MATLAB, the MATLAB software package. It's an open source adoption of variation of that, and it is a charting library. And you know, in a sense, you can use Matplotlib, you don't have to use anymore. But there is two major challenges working with Matplotlib, which is a very common finding with Python users. The first that the Matplotlib, because it's an imperative low-level library, you have to code many things manually. And sometimes you will wish for a higher level library with a better, shorter, easier to understand syntax. There is a Q&A there, but anyway, let me continue on that. So uh, one set of related libraries to Matplotlib will try to solve the first problem, the low level, very verbose syntax. Seaboard is one such library. The goal of Seaboard is to provide a higher level API or interface on top of Matplotlib. So it would be easier to create charts and also has quite nice visual defaults. So typically a Seaboard chart would look nice without any kind of uh, further adjustments or settings. It has a special focus on statistical charts as well. So if you look for statistical work, probably Seaboard will have the chart you need. Uh, there is a gallery as well, but I won't mention them, just flip through them. And okay, let's have a look at the penguin chart in Seaborn. You can see two interesting things there. The first, we are still importing Matplotlib because some options not present in the Seaborn API. So we kind of goes down in the Matplotlib level and set there, for example, the figure size. And the other thing you can, you can see here that the actual code for creating the scatter plot is indeed much more shorter. And I would say more easy to understand. You just telling Seaborn, you want a scatter plot, you are setting the variables, you telling Seaborn that you want the color by, by species and the data is in the data frame called DF and the chart is done. The other, other library I want to mention here is plot line, plot nine. Plot9 has the same goal. It's one to be a higher level library on top of Matplotlib, but this came from the philosophy from the R word and ggplot. If you ever work with R, you will know that in the R word, ggplot is the data visualization library. It's a very nice syntax. So people who are coming to Python from R and has experience creating charts in uh, ggplot, then they will find plot line very, very similar to ggplot and it would be very easy for use for them because the syntax very closely copies the ggplot syntax. As you can see in the example, it is a high level library. You exactly need just three line of code to create the example scatter plot. You are importing plot line and then you are setting the variables and then you are coloring them by the species and you are done everything else like the axis labels or the legend with the species is automatically generated. You don't have to specify them manually. Okay, there is a, a few summary slides during the presentation. This is for later viewing. So this is just when you review the presentation, you can see what I told during the talk. Uh, let's have a second look at our map. So we have a core low level library, Matplotlib. And if you wish to use something which is higher level, easier to use, then we can either go to Seaboard or if we have, uh, we already have no experience with ggplot, then plotline would be a good library for them. And this is the first group of library libraries at plotlib and the higher level wrappers around Matplotlib. Let's move to the second group. 
if you are, I told that there was, that there is basically two challenges related to using Matplotlib. The first is the rule of syntax. And the second, there was for a long time, lack of any kind of interactivity, interactive features. So if you wanted to have like browser-based JavaScript over visualization, where you can have interactive features, Matplotlib doesn't really did that. That was the reason for the creation of Bokeh, which is, I would say, the probably the second most widely used and well-known data visualization library in Python. Bokeh was created to, to be able to do interactive charts in the browser powered by JavaScript, but it is actually a little bit more than just a charting library because the Bokeh library also has interactive controls or widgets. So, you know, sliders, checkbox, radio buttons, and it has features for building applications as well. So you can use Bokeh as just a charting library, or you can try to build complete applications and dashboards just in Bokeh. We have our gallery as well there with examples where to check out. And then if you get to the code, again, I would say there is two things to see here. The first that the Bokeh code is kind of not short. So you can see again here that Bokeh is a low level library where you have to specify many things manually. You have complete control how Bokeh works, but you do have to learn the syntax and write the code to set every option the way you want. And the more interesting part on the left side, you can see the chart there, in the top right corner, there is a toolbar. This is where you can get the interactions. You can zoom in into the chart, you can select points, you can save it, and there is many more interactivity feature of Bokeh. This is just a presentation, so I can't show the interactive feature to you, but we will, I will be share the Google Colab notebook with, the, with all of the example charts, so you can try the interactive features for yourself after the presentation has been finished. All right, Bokeh background, let's move forward. What we have here is uh, our map. So now we have Bokeh as a second core low-level library, and now probably you can guess what's coming up. Of course, there is higher level wrapper libraries for Bokeh as well, which would make it more easier for, for creating charts in a more short, more dense syntax. The first I want to mention is Holoviews. It is a way for creating charts just by telling Holoviews how your data look like, and the chart will be auto-generated for that. An interesting part for Bokeh is that, of I mean, so for Holoviews, I'm sorry, that it is supporting not just Bokeh, it also support Matplotlib. As the documentation say, there is different backends for all of these. The key point is here that once you learned the whole of use syntax and the whole of use AP calls from creating uh, different kind of uh, libraries, then just with a single line of code and maybe very minor adjustment, you can have your charts generated either as Bokeh based charts or Mat Matplotlib based chart, there is even a new support for the Plotlib backend. So all of you try to be a really an overall library, which will serve as a common unification interface for several backends. And if you are moving to the whole of use code example, the whole of this penguin chart, you can see that again, this is just three lines of code because it's a high level decorative library. We are importing all of views. We are setting the backend to Matplotlib. So the chart here is actually rendered by Matplotlib. And the actual chart creation code is just one line. We are, past, we are telling uh, Holoviews that we need a scatter plot, passing in the list of variables and setting some options for coloring and figure side. Much more shorter, I would say, than the pure Bokeh version from the same chart or pure, or pure Matplotlib version from the same chart. There is actually, this is what you can see, the whole of this is a high-level library, which wraps both Bokeh or Matplotlib based on your preference. But there is more, you can see there is some white space below Holoviews because there are actually more than one high-level wrapping library for Bokeh. Let me quickly flip through them. There is HVplot, which aims to be a common charting interface for several Python data containers. So the idea is here then you can visualize your data stored in pandas or in dusk or in x array, x array with exactly the same syntax. HVplot will read your data from the data container and then generate all of these objects 
So each report is based on top of all views, and the actual charts will be then visualized by Bokeh. Another interesting option is uh, Pandas Bokeh Library, which is an independent project done by Patrick Lobil, if I pronounce it right. The goal is kind of the same. You have your data is in a Pandas, no GeoPandas or PySpark data frame, and you want to plot them using Bokeh, then you can just import Pandas Bokeh, and then you can use the plot Bokeh function. So just a single line of code, you will get your data frame data visualized in Bokeh. Uh, it's a bit same in context, same in goals that the, what, uh, what HVPlot does. Your data is in a data frame you want to visualize in Bokeh, the most simple way it's possible. And uh, it was very interesting to see the sponsor announcement for Spotify, because another chart for working for Bokeh data would be Chartify, and it does come from Spotify. There is a very nice blog post on the Spotify tech blog, where they described that they wanted to have a standard, high level, easy way to create charts within Spotify for all data scientists. And they did not find anything which really liked, anything which really liked. So they created their own, which is open source, and that's Chartify. I don't have an example for that, but on the Chartify website, there is very nice examples how you can use Chartify to, to, to chart your data. OK, our summary sites uh, for later viewing. And let's have a look at the map. So now we have two low-level core libraries, Matplotlib and Bokeh. And we, we have several high-level wrappers for, for each of them. Let's move forward. The third group of uh, Python visualization libraries in my, in my classification would be the Plotly family. Uh, it is actually several, several components building on top of each other, coming from the same group, same company, the same group of people. The lower level, the lower level libraries is the, the Plotly open source graphic libraries. There is a Python library. There is an R library. My understanding is there is also a Julia library is in the works. And then there is the Plotly JavaScript open source graphic library, which powers all of the Python R or Julia visualization. So you can create your low level charts in Python R or hopefully soon in Julia, and they will be rendered by the Plotly GS Plotly library. Uh, if you are having a closer look at the Python open source option, you will see that there is a huge number of uh, chart types supported. This is just the first part of a long, long list, but on the left side, you can see that there is fundamentals, there is basic chart, statistical chart, scientific chart, financial charts, map. There's even support for 3D charts. And my understanding is that it's kind of a unique feature uh, supporting 3D chart generation, which no other Python library does really well. So if you need 3D charting, then probably Plotly would be a good, so good uh, solution for you. But I have no, no code option for Plotly because since the last year, there is a new higher level library from Plotly called Plotly Express. And, uh, and the recommendation is now that if you want to create Plotly based chart, you should start at Plotly Express. You can always get down to the Plotly level if you need. There is something you can do in Plotly Express. But in generally speaking, the Plotly Express library would be a more easier and nice experience for creating plotly based charts. Uh, this is the documentation side. You can see that there is more than 30 different function in Plotly Express. So there is many, many chart type which you can actually create just working from Plotly Express without moving into the lower Plotly level charting API. Let's have a look at the example code. This is, well, this is how you can create the Penguin chart in Plotly Express. It's very, very straightforward. You are importing the library and you are just then telling it, I need a scatter plot. Here is my data in the data frame. Here is my, here is my variables I want to be plotted. I want to, to mark colored by species and we are just setting the size and everything is done. Very, very nice, sweet, short syntax. Background information. And then, so now we covered three groups of libraries, Matplotlib, the Matplotly family, let's call that way, the Bokeh set of libraries and the Plotly Gef, and the Plotly Gef object. And we have a four, four uh, set of libraries that had to be discussed. And that would be a little bit different than the previous ones. So because Vega and Vega Lite, those are not libraries, 
their visualization grammars, uh, which means that their way of describing your visualization appearance and interactivity in JSON format, in JSON objects. Vega is a low level, very detailed specification, and there is Vega light, which is a little bit more, which is more, more uh, structured, it's easier to describe a standard chart. You can see here that the bar chart in Vega is a very, needs a very long description, about a hundred line of codes. The same charts in Vega light, just half a screen, because Vega light is a higher level way of describing chart. And there is a Python library for generating those descriptions, which called Alter. This is definitely built on top of Vega and Vega Lite. So if we move to the code, we can see that Alter here is very, very high level. We are just importing them and there is just one command to create the chart. We are telling the Alter here that we need the mark to be circles. We are encoding two variables at the X and Y axis and we are encoding the color by the species variable and we are setting some properties. So this is our final version of the charting libraries part. We have four major way of creating charts, matplotlib and the wrappers, mm -hmm. similar with bokeh, with the plotly line of code and altair as a fourth way. And we are almost finished here, but let me just mention that sometimes you need not just simply charts, you want to build dashboards or data apps, which has well, typically, more, typically more than one chart and add some interactivity controls, selectors, mm -hmm. and probably a way to run code and update your dashboard or app with the results of the code. And there is four options also for that. I'm just mentioning all of them. There is Plotly from Plotly Dash, Plotly Dash from Plotly, the company who are working with are creating Plotly, and it's let you create nice dashboard kind of visualization and apps. This is an example, you have your selectors on the left, and the visualization KPIs and charts on the right. There is panel, which is Anaconda related. I would say the same people are working on that who are writing color views. A very nice feature of, of panel that it supports inclusion of different kinds of charting libraries. On that sample dashboard, you can see that uh, the same chart is created in HVplot, in Alter, in Matplotlib, and in Plotly, and they are displayed on the same dashboard with some interactive controls. So panel is a friend to everyone. There is Voila, which is a little bit of a different approach and a very nice approach, I would say. Voila is, aims to be, uh, to provide an easy way to turn your Jupyter notebook into an interactive web apps. So this is how something, how a, this is how a Jupyter notebook look like after, after, after working in Voila. Your code cells is kind of hidden. So the end user just see your widgets and the visualization results, but they don't see your code and also they don't, they can't run any kind of code. It's a quite secure and quick way to, to publish your Jupyter, wood, Jupyter notebooks to a, to a larger audience, end user, larger end user audience. And the final one is Streamlit. This is a very interesting library. This is the newest kind, kind of the block. It's just 10 months old, but has a very large traction. And they like raised $21 million in funding in very recently. They are very strict, very, very much targeting the data scientist and data engineer uh, community. They say that this is the fastest way to build a machine learning app. So if you have a model, for example, a GN for generating images, then you can wrap it into a Streamlit app. On the left side, you have your parameter controls. And when you move them, then the image generation algorithm will rerun and you will get a new modified image. I definitely would recommend to try this out in your own browser and so how would that work. So this is our final map. We are coming from different backgrounds. There is core level libraries which give you absolute control, but you need to learn the syntax and learn and probably write longer code bases. There are, high, there are higher level wrapper libraries which would make working and creating chart easier. And then if you need more than just simple charts, then there is dashboard writing up frameworks four of them and all of them worth checking out. Final steps. At first, I want to mention the PyVis.org website, which is an open guide to all Python data visualization tool. So I mentioned that I don't cover all libraries in this talk because of time constraint, but the PyVis website try to cover everything. So you can see here many other charts being mentioned. There is very nice statistics about the libraries, Matplotlib, 
how you can see how many star it has, how many contributors are there, what is the download numbers, the core libraries or the dashboard libraries. There was a good talk at the Anaconda conference in June. I would recommend watching that as a next step. It's a little bit more advanced than my talk. So if you want to learn more, more about the Python utilization landscape, landscape, then I would recommend watching Jim's talk. There was a meetup last June where three of the contributors has spoken and you can download their slides and code examples from, the, from, from my blog post I wrote in them. And with that, we are wrapping at the talk. The conclusion is that we are living in a golden age with the Python database. There is many great libraries and very active development. There is a very, very nice and welcoming community, good cooperation between the different libraries. I'm very much looking forward what the next 12 months will bring in terms of the Python data visualization landscape. Material will be posted. I'm very happy to answer questions in Discord. You can also find me on Twitter or LinkedIn if you want to chat about data visualization and Python. Thank you very much for the attention. <laughs> Thank you very much for your nice talk. Um, we have time. We have many questions, actually. Too many questions. We will not have time for all. So let me... You already answered. Can you share the slides? So you don't have to answer this anymore. One interesting question is which of these are free and open source? Um, Johnny Zhang is asking that question. Uh, I believe that basically everything which has been... Uh which we show here is free and open source. Uh, I know that probably has some paid commercial options as well, but uh, if we go here, that basically everything I believe here is free and open source. The Plotly Dash has a not open source paid enterprise option, but my understanding is that everything else is here is free and open source. Then another question was, what is your favorite visualization package? It's, you know, it's a hard question because I definitely would, I definitely prefer the, the high level libraries. So I try to avoid, you know, learning too much syntax uh, from our specific lower level libraries. And I would say that for me, Altair is very nice. Plotly Express is very nice. Holoview is also very nice. I'm not much an R, R people, so Plot9 is doesn't really provide value to me because I don't know R. But I would say that Holoviews, Plotly Express, and Altair, all of them, I use them very happily. So you can't go wrong with any of any of them, I would, so I would say. And the question from Paolo Gomez, what are your thoughts on Apache Superset? Uh, it's a very good, very, good, uh, very good question. So there is actually two other open source projects uh, and a lot of them Apache Superset, which is, I'm not really familiar with them, but my understanding is that Supersets try to be uh, more of a business-like dashboarding tool, but I don't can't really comment on them. But I can say that I do see Superset is being used by a number of companies. So it, it has a strong following and a strong user base, but it's not covered in this talk. And then we have the question from Hui Xiang Chua, sorry for the pronunciation. Um, with the many libraries, which are the ones do you see usually? Well, I would say that uh, the four main set, all of them are be being quite widely used. Matplotlib everywhere. Many people just know Matplotlib and probably Seaborn. Bokeh is very widely used. For that, actually, I would say that the best way, not ask me, but if you check out the on the PyViz website, the statistics, then you can see that the either based by country, uh, by stars or by download, you can see that Matplotlib is like everywhere still. Everybody is using Matplotlib, 10 million download per month, but Plotlib is quite close to that, especially on, on PyPy, like 3 million downloads. And if you go down to the dashboarding level, then the downloading number would be Dash, which is the most well established uh, library, is probably the most widely used. All of them, you can feel 300k download per month, and others would be like seven, four, uh, like 70s and 30s and 27 downloads. But we're interesting to see the you know the market dynamics uh, between Streamlet. Streamlet is 10, 10 months old. It already has uh, 8k stars on GitHub. So this is something I said to be watched. 
Okay, uh, the time is up. Actually, there is one more question with a thumbs up. So <laughs> the really last one. Do you have any recommendation for geographical data? Uh, unfortunately, that's not my area of expertise. I do know that there are specific libraries targeting that. Uh, so probably for, for that kind of use case, you need something special, but I will have to kind of search or look it up. Let's come to Discord and then we have a discussion there. Exactly. Let's go to Discord and I'm sure Benze will, will ask all your questions, uh, answer all your questions there. You can ask him um, also the remaining questions. Unfortunately, we didn't have time to cover all. So thank you very much again. Uh,